for the first of the new video series that I'm going to be doing all about caravans, caravanning and anything else caravan related. Um, today is, as I said, the first of hopefully many videos that I'm going to do for you and today I'm going to be talking about these things, tow balls. Now I'm just changing the one on my car for an Alco one and the difference between a standard tow ball and an Alco tow ball is that gap in there. And basically what happens is when the hitch of the caravan goes down over the ball and you, um, if you've got the stabilizers, close the lever, they will lock the pads around the lower half of the ball which helps stop it coming off. Also, on the bottom of the stabilizer it's um, a little bit deeper than one you would find on a trailer and it can lead to the underside of your hitch rubbing on this part here which isn't great. Also if the pads aren't holding onto there properly it can result in pinging off. This is the tow ball that was on my car and I couldn't be sure of the measurement down here so just off totally off piste I thought I'll make sure I've got an Alco one. I bought an Alco one which is this black one. As it turns out the silver one has got the right dimension down there so it wasn't an issue but I bought it so we're going to put the new one on. Now if you do have a stabiliser whether it be an Alco or a Winterhof or any other you need to get this paint off of here. Now some of these are painted I believe some of them are powder coated but I think most of it is just paint. If you don't get the paint off of here it's going to clog up the pads in the stabiliser and it means it won't stabilise properly. So first thing to do get that off of there. Okay so that's got all the paint off that's all it needs is just remove the paint from there. Now I did mention grease. The little bit of grease that you get from your hands isn't going to be an issue. But what you might find is if you haven't got a stabiliser on your caravan, if you've got an older caravan that's just got the lever that you lift up and click it on, um, and it's just like a metal shoe that goes over that, or a trailer with the same, then you will need to grease that ball. Now. When you put your tow ball cover back on afterwards that will stop you getting all the grease all around your clothes. What you need to remember though is if you tow with both you're going to need to degrease this before you put it back in to your stabiliser. And the reason for that is in the front of the stabiliser you have pads that are basically the same as a brake pad um, on your car or on your motorbike and obviously if you grease up your brakes they won't work. It's the same with that. So that's another tip for you. Keep that grease free unless you're putting it into a non-stabiliser hitch and then you will need a little bit of grease on there to lubricate it as it moves around and the trailer's pivoting on the, the ball itself. Just remember to degrease it again before it goes back into your stabiliser. Right, let's go and put this on. Okay, so that bolts in, it's only finger tight at the moment. And then we put spring washer on. And not on that side. And then we can torque these up. It's really bizarre. I didn't think that was in the right hole for the, the bracket. I don't remember it sticking up higher than the flange on the tow bar. But clearly it was because the bolts don't fit through the other holes.
Now, there is obviously a torque setting for these, which with the non nylock nuts is 252 newton meters, which I will do up in a second. I'm just going to take the worst of the slack out before I put the torque wrench on. I will move you in a second because I've got a nasty feeling you're going to be in the way. actually not liking the fit of the uh, socket on these. Let me just move for a second. There. I'm not liking the fit of the socket on these bolts. They're supposed to be 24 mil. That's a little bit too much rattle for me. I've got these ones which oh, I don't know about the same I mean this is a new new socket basically so it should be a tighter fit than that I think we'll be okay to 252 250 Two. Right. now we'll have to move you socket to be as square on here as I can get it. one done. I can imagine there's quite a lot of pressure to go on there. Okay, so <clears throat> the second one took a little bit more and I needed to borrow somebody's foot to go on the other side of the spanner to stop it from spinning. I couldn't do it on the other. But they're all done now. That's it all nice and clean, free of dirt and crap. Oh, just another quick one as well. Don't put your breakaway cable around the neck. Um, they don't work too well around there. Most of the tow bars will have an eye on one side or the other. Sometimes it's on the back of the flange, 
and sometimes like mine, mine's just under here. And just to make it easier, let me uh, move you down there. So as you can see on mine, I've just put a D shackle on there just to just to um, make it a little bit easier to get the breakaway cable on and off. A little bit of Loctite on the end to stop it from coming loose with the vibration of driving. Now, if you've got a swan neck tow bar, some of these rules are slightly different for you. Yes, you will still need to get the paint off. No, you won't have to worry too much about the gap between the ball and the start of the flange because obviously the swan neck is a lot more narrow. The only thing that you need to watch out for is your breakaway cable. Don't put it around the swan neck, especially if it's a detachable. Um, I've actually had it in the past where the locking mechanism for the detachable bar wasn't engaged properly. It came off, breakaway cable came off with it, the caravan didn't stop. Well, I hope that makes perfect sense to you um, and it may help some of you out. Um, and I'm not trying to teach anybody how to suck eggs, it's just, just some people don't know. So if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. See you soon.